I'm Sarah Ramon, the Executive Director for the Roofing Contractors Association of Texas. Founded in 1975, RCAT is a statewide trade association made up of roofing and waterproofing contractors. This group of professionals represents the voice of the roofing industry in Texas. And our purpose is to help our members operate successful roofing and waterproofing businesses in Texas, to provide continuing education, room for growth of their companies, networking, and an annual conference and trade show. Today, we're here to talk about consumer awareness and the importance of choosing a roofing contractor. I'm here today with Mike Eyman uh, with Nimble Restoration Services. He's a residential roofing contractor uh, here in North Texas and actually has a, a great Facebook presence and uh, some of you may recognize and see him. Uh, he, he hashtags a lot of stuff with the janky roofer. So we're specifically wanting to help you understand the importance of hiring a roofing contractor after a uh, hail event or a storm event in Texas or just for general maintenance purposes. The state of Texas does not require licensure. It does not require uh, roofers to carry insurance. There is no registration. So therefore, there is no consumer protection for you at the state level. So it's incredibly important that you do your homework when choosing a contractor. Uh, the roof is literally the lid on your home and it protects everything inside. Uh, all those valuables you have, your loved ones. Um, and so it's incredibly important that you choose wisely when you have somebody a operating on that portion of your home. Right, Mike? Absolutely, absolutely. So yes, thank you for uh, joining me here today. So yeah. what happens when uh, a contractor knocks on the door? Hail's not even melted on the ground outside yet and they, they're preying on your emotional side. You've got an emergency. We're gonna tarp this roof for you right now and all you have to do is sign this piece of paper. Yeah. So, you know, I understand that, you know, as a, as a company, we have to go out and we have to generate this business and, and a means to generate this business is is through knocking on doors and talking to homeowners and, and communities. Um, but what I would tell folks is that it takes a, a large hail, a large hail to actually do the kind of devastation that would require immediate um, assistance or like tarping or something like that. Now, obviously, wind plays a factor in this, but um, kind of to your point, people just need to be aware. And I think that that's really the, the lack of education is that people just aren't aware that there is no registration, there is no licensing, there's no requirement for insurance. And it's kind of a scary thought, you know, cause uh, you know, your, your home two, three, four, 500,000 upwards of that. Um, and like you were saying, it's the lid on the house that protects everything on, on the inside. And uh, if it's done by a, what I call janky roofer, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you, you're, you're, your risk is higher that it's gonna leak and fail. And then you're gonna be back in a situation where now you have to replace, repair the roof from the previous guy. And you also have interior damage that could be hardwood floors throughout. It could be drywall, mold. I mean, there's, a, there's implications on not making a good decision up front that will last long-term. So. Right. Um, also, tell me about manufacturer's warranties. So uh, there's a lot of them out there, right? Mm -hmm. There's many different roofing products and product types. So is it important to have a roofing contractor that is certified with a manufacturer in your mind? Well, so we are we're actually certified with two different manufacturers, uh, and we do this basically just to for education for our guys. Um, we admittedly don't sell a whole lot of separate warranties because we're in such a hail stricken market where we get hit so often. Um, the warranties that we give, we tell people like, look, you're you're going to stand on our workmanship warranty probably more than you are the manufacturer because I've been doing this for a little over a decade now, and I can count on one hand the number of times that I've called in legitimate warranty claims for like premature granule loss, premature color fade, something like that, dropping right. of the shingle. And so, um, but th that said, you know, I definitely feel that there's value in having somebody that's gone through those those steps and gotten with the manufacturer, finding out what a per spec roof looks like as far as building it. Because again, the 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 uh, the buy-in to become a roofer is twenty nine dollars at your at your local county clerk's office, and go down there, file a DBA. If you want to get insurance, you get a GL policy that maybe not roofing specific, which gives you the impression or gives people you know visually the, the impression that you're covered or you have insurance. But if God forbid, if there's ever a claim against that, and you're not, it's not roofing specific. They're not going to pay out anything. This home, this homeowner, property owner has a false sense of security because they see this insurance, but it's 
it's not worth the paper it's printed on. So, um, but kind of, I kind of trailed off there, but kind of back to your point, uh, as far as having those manufacturers, you know, we're, a, we're big on education. We want to make sure that, that our guys have a full scope of what's going on, whether it be the manufacturer, uh, some of the education CE credits that we get from RCAT, um, NTRCA, which yeah. is another local organization. Uh, so there's definitely value in, in bringing the knowledge to our guys, which who can then bring it to the consumer. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you brought up a couple of really good points I want to touch on here. One is the importance of insurance, right? Mm -hmm. This oh, is yeah. a great thing. People, uh, homeowners don't understand this. Uh, so a contractor shows you a, a GL policy and you specifically said this, it doesn't really cover the act of roofing on your home specifically. So you got your roof wide open and it pours down rain water comes pouring into your home mm -hmm. causes interior damage right it's an it's an act of god you know pop-up storms happen yeah. all the time sometimes they're preventable uh sometimes you know they're not as far as getting your home protected but this is worst case scenario water pours into your home buckles your kitchen floors and you know ruins all kinds of stuff so this is where insurance you know would come into play right mm -hmm. where oh, yeah. you would want to make sure that contractor was covered so just because he has gl insurance or or showed you general liability insurance coverage, if he's not covered for the act of roofing your home, then you have no recourse or liability with that insurance company. You cannot personally file a claim. So this brings me to the importance of doing your homework, right? So a roofing contractor is knocked on your door. First things first, they stick anything in front of you to sign. Don't sign anything right off the bat until you've had an opportunity exactly. to do your homework. So in doing your homework, first things for consumers, you can check with your local BBB. Uh, you can check with a statewide trade association such as RCAT. Uh, we also have six regional chapters. We have the North Texas. We have Central Texas, which is the I-35 corridor, Austin uh, to Waco, San Antonio as well. We have Houston, Lubbock, Abilene, and Amarillo. So you've got a lot of places over inside the state of Texas to go check to see if they're a member of an association such as ourselves. We require our members to have been in business a minimal of one year uh, doing roofing and carry general liability insurance. And yes, we do call and check to make sure that it covers them doing roofing on your home. So when you go to my website and you put in your zip code and you find a roofing contractor like Mr. I'm in, you're going to know that they have been vetted and verified, at least to our standards. Now, something goes wrong with a contractor that you've hired. Um, they've taken your money and run. They put on, I, I have a personal story. I'll tell you my my roofing scam okay. story. So uh, they put on the wrong product. Uh, you, they've done these other things. Well, this is what happens. You pick up the phone and you call down to the Texas Department of Insurance or you call the Texas Department of of licensing and regulation. You know what they're gonna tell you to do? Call me. And that's really not completely fair because we're not a consumer organization. We're a trade association to help roofing contractors be better businessmen. But part of our um, consumer advocacy program is raising awareness through you and ensuring that we are educating our contractors who are members of local and, and state laws, uh, other regulations and requirements that are out there to protect you. And they're very few. So you find a roofing contractor with us, you can be assured they are, are vetted and verified, but you've chosen somebody that's left a card on your door. Maybe they did your neighbor's house and you have something wrong and you call these departments, they tell you to call me. Well, they're not a member of my association either in, in most cases, mm -hmm. then I get the calls and the complaints about, and there's nothing I can do for you either. So you have no recourse in Texas except to hire legal counsel um, and take these people to court if there is a dispute between between the two of you. So doing your homework is incredibly important, making sure that they have a legitimate business, uh, making sure that they carry insurance. And yes, you can call, sorry, you can call the number on uh, the certificate that they give you, uh, sp speak with their agent and sometimes the carrier as well and validate and verify the coverage that they have. So these inexperienced roofers that pop up, it's hailstorm. Now suddenly everyone with a truck and a ladder is a roofing contractor. Oh, and yeah. so let's talk let's talk about the dangers of getting a hold of somebody who is unqualified and inexperienced. Talk to me about worst case scenario. So let me kind of just back up a little bit. So what people need to understand is that right after a storm, 
a lot of companies are in a mad dash to find manpower. Manpower to go down, pound the pavement, knock on doors, talk to homeowners. And these guys are going in with next to zero training, mm -hmm. uh, like a like a, a 30 minute, you know, halftime speech, go out there and go get it. And these guys don't know what they're talking about. And so um, I have my own story. So uh, I went out, uh, we, had a, we had a fresh hail storm recently. Uh, I went out uh, to go meet with one of my team members uh, at a house. He's like, look, man, I need a second opinion on this. I go up there and there is created damage by a guy that I, I, I kind of did a little bit of investigation. I kind of found out that this guy that went into this fairly secluded neighborhood, signed up 15 people, had them all file claims, was manufacturing damage on the roof. And so- And how do they do that? Uh, well, I don't know how they did it, but I, I've seen, I've heard, seen, you know, in the past where people have talked about using coins, uh, little tools, uh, really anything that create can create a circular. Model. So the reason I knew that it was created uh, is because when when hail falls, it blankets the entire roof. So it's not going to blanket a ten square or a 10, uh, 10 by ten area, which we in the industry call a test square. But that's where the damage was. It's very, really close, tight knit, you know, uh, proximity, and. Uh, Unfortunately, I had to tell the homeowner, I'm like, look, you, you, know, you let somebody up on your roof that you know told you that there was damage and told all of your neighbors that there was damage, but there's not really damage. There's a bunch of like marring from, you know, during the course of installation, but some of those 100%, you know, having, having been in the business and seen, I went to Hague engineering certification. So we really dialed in like what's hail damage, what's mechanical damage and what is created intentional damage. And uh, not to mention the fact that it is highly illegal is insurance fraud to do that it really, it really messes over the homeowner because now they have this stuff that the, this, this, these, this damage on the roof. Insurance not going to cover it, and this guy that created it, um, kind of to your point, you know, he wasn't trained properly and uh, really was just not above board in the first place. And so that's really the inherent problem with just letting anybody on your roof without looking, giving just take some pause. Just it's not. A super serious situation. It's not like a tornado came through, a hurricane ripped through and ripped half your roof off. I mean, we're talking about typically golf ball size hail, which yeah, it's going to create damage, but it's not going to create penetrations in the roof right then because everything, the way everything's overlapped, there's typically two or even three layers of shingles there. Uh, your insurance pays for it because their obligation is to indemnify you for pre-loss condition. But um, anyway, it just, it, it can be really a bad situation and it really can be at least mitigated to some degree by doing that homework like you were talking about, using resources like the BBB, RCAT. Uh, obviously, uh, BBB is great. RCAT is specific to roofers, right? So if you're looking for a roofer, you know you can go on BBB and, and find anything you want, but RCAT is gonna be a great resource for finding somebody that has, again, gone through that extra, th those extra hoops and really wants to separate themselves as the guy that you need to hire, so. There you go. So I asked you earlier about the manufacturer's pieces because this is one of a, this is a big scam that's perpetuated in Texas a lot. It's actually, it's happened to me quite a few times. Uh, they knock on the door and they say, there's a manufacturer's defect in the product that you have on your roof and they've sent me here <laughs> to come and look at it. So this, this happened to me very, very, very recently. And it's not even the worst roofing story I have, but they knocked on my door and they, of course I, I work from home and they have no idea what I, what I do. And that, um, I work with roofers all day long, every day, and that I knew better. And I gave the guy my card and had, had no idea, you know, he's, he's, he's seriously, no, that yeah. he just insisted. No, nope, the manufacturer sent me here to get on your roof. I won't bother you, it won't take me five minutes, just let me grab my ladder. You don't even have to come back outside, right. he said. And I go, if you get on my roof, <laughs> you're gonna have a big problem. And this that's something that happens. Uh, yeah. I've seen it in the neighborhood um, the, where a roofer has, has pulled up and actually gotten on someone's roof without permission. Or one of the scams, like I said, they perpetuate is that we've been sent here by your manufacturer. Now, obviously that's not gonna happen in a storm situation, but when the storm situation has been dry, for a little while right there are some roofers out there that uh, get desperate resort and, to resort mm -hmm. to different tactics yeah and, and pull some of these and so and homeowners are unaware you you have no idea that um, you know your manufacturer maybe you bought the house last year 
right. you know, you have no idea. Well, most of the time your manufacturer's warranty does not convey, right? Mm, yeah. So, and people don't know and they don't understand these things. And so that's why RCAT feels it's important that we provide just as much education to you consumers as to the roofing community as, as well so that you can make an informed and an educated decision. So I had a, another situation in a, in a prior home where it was a, we had a north side of Austin, had a tornado um, and uh, some hail and half of my roof was actually ripped off. Um, we hired a roofer that was doing some neighbor's homes and uh, he was not supposed to do the roof. We were going on vacation. We came home and the roof was done and it was not the product that we had selected. Um, the homeowners association immediately issued a fine and threatened to sue. I repeatedly called the roofing contractor who I found out very quickly was only in town to chase the storm uh, because when I went to the address on his business card it was the Super 8 motel so yeah and this is this has been some time ago but this it happens and it's really easy to happen to you so when you're in a situation where it, whether it's just maintenance or selling a home or it is a storm situation before you hire a roofing contractor you want a guy like this who knows what he's doing has experience and, and is involved in educating other roofers out there in the world but you want to ensure that your investment in your home and in my opinion Opinion, the most important structural component of it is done correctly, right? Absolutely. There you go. Absolutely. Then. All right. Well, thank you for that, Mike. We appreciate your input. Um, I appreciate and Jamie. Reach out to the Roofing Contractors Association. Uh, we will find uh, some roofing contractors in your area using your zip code, or you can go to our website at rcat.net uh, to find one. And uh, there are great uh, consumer resources out there for you as well.